Each statement below is a contingency, uh, which is, means it's true for some assignments of truth values to the variables and false for others. Uh, for each statement, give an assignment of truth values that makes the statement true and another that makes it false. So we want an assignment of truth values that makes the statement true on this side. And we want an assignment of truth values that makes the statement false on this side. Okay. Let's start with the first statement. We've got not A implies A, which is an odd looking statement. But we'll just try it out. There's only one variable. And so that variable can only be true or false. So let's imagine that A is true and just see what would happen. We'll have not true implies true. Well, that's the same as false implies true. And false implies true up in our truth table for implication is true. The only case where a conditional is false is when it's true implies false, and this isn't it. So when we put in true for A, we get a true result. So that can be our true assignment. Now when we put in false, I hope we get a false result, otherwise this isn't going to work. So we put in false for A instead, and we get not false, that's just true implies false and we just said true implies false that's the only case where a conditional is going to be false so indeed putting false over here gives us a false result all right great that takes care of the first one uh, now the second one has three variables so we're not going to try all eight combinations of truth values on the second one and the third one's got four variables and we're definitely not going to try all 16 combinations of truth assignments for the third one so we're gonna have to be a little more clever so we want to make this second one true and the main operator here is this conditional. So this is a conditional with some stuff on the left and some stuff on the right and we just said a conditional is true as long as it isn't in the pattern true implies false. So if we want to make this true we could either make this left hand side false or we can make this right hand side true and the right hand side is a mess here so I'm just going to ignore it and I'm going to make this left hand side false and that should make the whole conditional true and that's really easy to do we've got P and Q here to make it false we just have to make P false or Q false so I'll make P false and I don't really care what Q and R are so I'm just going to make them both true just so they both have values and then I know P will be false so P and Q will be false so this will be false implies something true or false doesn't really matter either way the whole expressions truth value will be true fabulous so that takes care of our true assignment now we need a false assignment well, we just said the only way to get false is to have this left-hand side be true and this right-hand side be false. Again, I'm going to start on the left-hand side because it's simpler. So for P and Q to be true, we need P and Q to be true. So we'll need P to be true, and we'll need Q to be true, and we'll just hope that that doesn't stop us from making the right-hand side false. So P does appear on the right-hand side over here. So let's just replace that with true, so we know that that's true. And uh, Q does appear on the right-hand side, and that's also true. Oh, No matter what we do with R, R or true is going to be true. So this piece over here is going to be true. And that means that this conditional is true no matter what. Uh, because anything implies true. The only way it's going to be false is if it's true implies false. And for a moment there I was worried because that makes the right hand side true, but don't forget this little negation here. Let's just erase all our ink marks so we can see that negation. There it is! Glorious negation. So the implication is going to be true regardless of what we assign to R, and that means the negation of that will be false, and we'll get our true implies false that we need. So we're actually already taken care of, and I'll just make R true, because R turns out not to matter. And that's interesting. So we ought to be able to take this statement then, and with logical equivalences, figure out that it's equivalent to something that doesn't include R, because R didn't have any effect on the truth value of the statement.
Well, no, because if we made R true, then that would make this true, and that would make the whole conditional here true, and that would make this false. Yeah. But the only way to make this true is to have P be true. Yeah, so R doesn't matter. That would be a good exercise. OK. Let's erase that, because it's hard to see the third problem now. Okay, third problem. P or not P? Well, before I go on, I'm just going to note that that's just true. P or not P is true, regardless. Uh, exclusive or. Q and R implies S. Okay, well, what's true exclusive or something? So exclusive or says one side or the other is true, but not both. Exactly one side is true. Uh, this side is already true, so in order for the whole statement to be true, this has actually got to be false. So really, this is just the same. Let's let's simplify this. That that true exclusive or is really just the same as negating the right hand side of that exclusive or. So I could just put a negation in there, and I've got the same thing, and that's going to be a lot easier to work with. Uh, and it means p doesn't matter. So I'm just going to set p to be true here, and I'm going to set p to be true here. It doesn't matter one way or the other. Now, not q and r implies s. Um, hmm. So to make it true, we have to make the inside false. And this is an and, so we can make either part false to make the whole thing false. This is the simpler one over here, q. So I will just make q false, and that should make the whole thing true. And then we'll double check that. So if q is false, then it's false and something. We haven't figured out what that is yet, but it doesn't really matter. Because it's an and, the whole thing's going to be false. And not false will give us true. So that should work. We'll put in some values for r and s, just so we have values there. We don't want to leave it blank. So r is true and s is true. I'm just picking true for all the things I don't care about, so I don't have to think about it. I could have picked false for some of them. But why not stick with a consistent pattern? OK, so if we wanted to make the inside false to make the whole thing true, we're going to want to make the inside true to make the whole thing false. And it is, as we said, an and. So to make it true, we need this side to be true, and we need this side to be true. Uh, making this side true is pretty straightforward. We need q to be true. Making this side true, it's a conditional. So we need to make sure it's not the pattern true implies false. So as long as we make r false or we make s true, everything's going to be fine. So I'm just going to make r false. And that should make everything work. And I don't care about s at that point. I'll just make it true. OK, let's double check that one. Let's actually double check it with the whole thing here. We'll go back to the original statement and make sure it works. So I have true for p. and true for q, and false for r, and true for s. So that is true or not true. Not true here is just going to be false. So that's true or false for this side, which is true. So I've got true exclusive or whatever comes on this side. So here I've got false implies true. That's true. True and true, that's true for this whole side. And true exclusive or true, well, exclusive or means one or the other, but not both. And this is both. So that is going to be false, which is what I wanted on this side.